<laughs> Thank you for helping me remember that, Terry. I always need help with that. Um, so welcome everybody. Uh, we are very delighted to have um, several folks who are going to present an LCI roundtable for us. Um, we have Jacques Renault. I'll let everybody introduce themselves a little bit. Um, but just um, to introduce the speakers, Janice, Janice Smith, Jennifer Ludiana, and Patrick Miller. I am not sure that Charles Severin is going to join the call. I'm guessing not, since I don't think anybody's heard from him. So if you have a, maybe a few more minutes than I um, suggested before, and we'll also have time for questions. Um, so I think what I'd like to do is allow, I know it's hard, but I want to make sure everybody has time. And we'll just go in the order of um, how you appear in the users panel. Um, but we could, you know, go ahead and type your questions into the chat. And if, um, and then we'll hold those questions until the end so to ensure that everybody has time to talk about their LTI tools. And before we actually begin, I'm going to go through a couple of updates and announcements. Uh, the first one is today at 11 a.m., right after this call, uh, a presentation by Noodle Partners on paying attention to usability in Sakai. That should be a really session, and I hope many of you have a chance to attend. Also on August 10th at 10 a.m., there is a meeting of, um, for the farm project on Sakai Native Rubrics. So um, for those of you interested in um, that project, I, I hope you can participate. Sakai 11 is very close to a release. One locker bug is worked on right now. And once it's fixed, QA will, will need to be done in order to um, market forward. And then I think we are ready to release Sakai 11. And that is a huge milestone. So can, thank you and congratulations to all the folks who have worked so hard on making uh, for developers a TV event at Maris. Um, a hackathon has been scheduled, and there's a link to it. I'll also paste that into the chat. So if any of you are interested in going to that hackathon, it should be really um, fun um, developing some apps in Suki. Um, so if that's the kind of thing you like to do, then that's that's where you need to go. <laughs> All right, so I think we're ready to move on to our round table. And Jacques, I'm gonna start with you and give you presenter privileges. Um, let me do that, there you go. Um, Actually, uh, you should start with me because okay. I'm gonna introduce what we're gonna say and then Jacques will do a, do a demo. Okay, very good. So I'm just giving you the presenter for this. Okay, working on it. All right. So, and Janice, uh, you might want to reintroduce yourself more about where you are and what you're doing. Okay. It says I'm sharing my desktop. Let's see if we can see the PowerPoint. Looking good. Uh, I just remembered the, let's see if this works. There we go. No, I've got to swap displays. Now, are you seeing uh, lines through the screen? Yeah. 
if I think we may just go with this. Okay, sure. We should have. I should have checked. I'm working on double screens and not sure what that is, but we can read it. So this is uh, uh, a PowerPoint influenced screen uh, showing you the Karuda open source portfolio LTI integrated with Sakai. I'm Janice Smith from Three Canoes LLC. I'm speaking to you from St. Paul, Minnesota, USA today. And we also have Jacques Reynaud from HEC Montréal in Montréal this morning. Uh, I'm going to do a really brief introduction and then Jacques will show you something without the lines on the screen where he'll be demonstrating our LTI integration with, with uh, Sakai. Uh, the Karuta story. It's just a minute. The Karuta story. Sakai was to be replaced by OAE. Um, I'm not sure how to turn this off here. There we go. Sakai was to be replaced by OAE a long time ago, but that's another story. It didn't actually happen, but we were all scared in the OSP community that OSP would go away and we would not have a replacement. So the OSP community underwent an extensive visioning process, and during that time, HEC Montréal participated and developed Karuda in the spirit of OSP, but with a great many new enhancements and a different code base. The Karuta project expanded to include Kyoto University and Three Canoes LLC, and we designed Karuta for LTI integration with Sakai. Then IUT Grenoble in France joined the project, and Karuta graduated from a perio incubation, and it finally came about that OSP is no longer part of Sakai. We released Karuta 2.0 in May, and we now have a full-fledged portfolio implement, uh, available for your implementation. And what we're going to do today is show you how it can be integrated with Sakai. Our user base includes HEC Montréal, the Grenoble School in France, two graduate programs in, in Japan, the New Brunswick Theological Seminary in New Jersey, a dance archive in Quebec, and many pilots along with an RFP going on in France for major use of Karuta across the country. Just to summarize about Karuta, Karuta gives you flexibility to organize different resources that can be taking the form of text or documents or videos or rubrics or comments according to a workflow, a portfolio workflow for different users to interact with each other. And it focuses on three areas, learning portfolios for academic or professional knowledge, skills and identity, assessment portfolios to help improve programmatic or institutional education curricula, and showcase portfolios to allow users to display their work and their skills to employers or mentors or for the job search. That concludes my portion. We were to keep this short, and so I'm going to turn it over to Doc by unsharing my screen. Great, thanks. Okay, Doc, there you go. Doc, you're muted. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm there. I'm sharing my screen now. Okay, so can you see that? The zone go screen? Yeah. Yep. Okay, this is going to be a very short uh, demo. Uh, just to show you how we use it right now at HSA, uh, we use Karuta in a couple of courses. We're planning to use it at the uh, for all the master students in economics and also for uh, the MBA students. So the way we'd like to see that is that, uh, of course, this is like our current implementation of uh, Sakai, which is called Zonko. It's in French. But I'm sure you will find everything familiar. So this is a summer picture. We change a picture every year, every uh, every every season. So I'm getting in as a as a student 
or sort of, and then I'm going to pick the course where uh, there has been an integration with uh, Kahuta. And I guess this is pretty much uh, how people proceed with that, is that you have the list of uh, the different tools that are available. Uh, we have an outside tool called Tegrity that uh, I think is, uh, is available through LTI integration, but I don't know much about the tool although I'm using it. And there is the Karuta. Uh, Karuta appears here uh, as, a, as a regular tool. Uh, the integration is quite easy. Uh, I don't want to get into the uh, very specific detail, but uh, uh, there are some files that have to be set up and uh, you change some conditions and, and things go through quite, quite easily. So, uh, this is a course in economics students sort of have to sort of uh, work out and, uh, in, in this environment. So they click on, on Karuta to sort of exceed. And then there is a small thing that I'm going to, to fix is that our current Karuta server is not at HTTPS and our Sakai implementation is a HTTPS. So it has some kind of a, a small issue there. So. This is really uh, important for you to understand that, uh, okay, this is the welcome page of uh, Karuta. And the way it, it goes is that Karuta has a very sophisticated uh, role uh, management system. So it is very easy in Karuta to create all sorts of roles. Uh, so the way it goes is that uh, you have the LTI integration, so we know that a student is enrolled in a course and sort of logs in into Karuta, so everything will, will go through. So there is no uh, new login, it's a single sign-on that goes on. But on the Karuta side, uh, we have to sort of make sure to, uh, uh, to sort of create the, the portfolios that our students are going to use uh, and give the right permission and roles to all the people involved. Uh, so this is done through a sort of uh, a batch file. So so this is what I've done uh, like before, I mean, getting the, uh, the integration, the LTI integration. So within Kahuta, uh, you have to go through a, a very simple sort of to run a simple batch file that sort of create all the portfolios and and sort of uh, give the, the, the appropriate roles to all the users. So by the way, here I have only one portfolio, but uh, uh, there could be a, as many portfolio as uh, I'm, I, I subscribe to. So if I, I'm a student and uh, I, I sort of link to like different portfolio for maybe different courses or maybe different programs, they will show up here. Uh, so the student has to click here and we'll sort of go into this uh, welcome page from Karuta and he, he will be able to sort of uh, do whatever action that are available. For example, uh, here there's a menu. I can create uh, what we call an intervention in French is like a, a post and then there's the post there and I, I can go on. All the, all the uh, all the uh, the pencils are 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 action available to to me as a student, and I can uh, all the, the 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 all the all the the, the the workflow is is working fine, and all the roles are passed, and uh, things are are going quite smoothly. Of course. Uh, I, as an instructor, there, there is no problem. I can I can log as an instructor. I will be able to sort of uh, have a rubric, have a set of rubric here that uh, that are available. Uh, the only thing is that the integration so far, uh, this is the only integration we have. Uh, we could work out uh, some kind of, uh, uh, this is LTI1, by the way. So we can work out a kind of integration with, let's say, with a gradebook. But uh, we haven't, I mean, usually in portfolios, I mean, the, 
the kind of integration uh, will, will, would need to be like, much more sophisticated. And we have all our own set of reports within Caruta. And for myself and maybe if, uh, for many people, I should say, uh, right now, the idea is that uh, it is quite easy for us to sort of generate the reports within Caruta, get the grades and everything, and maybe come back to uh, the gradebook and just upload that on the sort of Excel import uh, facility. But of course, better integration with uh, with Sakai would be interesting, especially with, let's see, with the resource and also with the, with the uh, assignment. But uh, right now, the LTI2 possibilities are, are not fully operational. So this is something that cannot be done. But since the portfolio is, is a sort of uh, kind of interesting but uh, very different approach to like uh, teaching and learning. So, I mean, the way we do it right now sort of for us, it's it's working fine. So, uh, so we'll continue for a while with that. But of course, better integration with Sakai would be much more interesting, and uh, it will, would be much welcome. Thank so you. So I'm going to stop here. Great. Uh, and uh, I don't. Maybe Janice, you want to add stuff? Um, okay. Uh, gonna, I want to. Yeah move on to our next presenter. Um, so Jennifer, I think you're up next. I'm going to go ahead and give you presenter privileges. And then we'll come back and um, we can have more conversations around these tools. So go ahead, Jennifer, whenever you're ready. Okay. Can you see anything? Yes, we, we see you. Okay, my name is um, Jennifer Laudiana and I'm from Walsh University. Uh, we've started using LTI more because it's very easy to implement. We're on Sakai 10.7 and with Sakai 10, it, it's very simple to do. I can do most of these, so that's what's nice is we don't have to have, um, we're hosted with long sites, so we don't always Admin console and there's a form. I just fill in the fields. Uh, the vendor has to give me the uh, launch URL, the regular key, and the secret key. And those I enter. Uh, you have choices for putting in um, if you wanted to integrate with email or grades or any of that stuff. It's all optional. But the three big things are the key, the two different keys and the launch URL. And so once I have that from the vendor. I pretty much am good to go. So the first one I'm going to talk about really quickly is Atomic Learning. Um, this is a digital library of training that we subscribe to. And I've set it up so that the instructors can have currently up to three tutorials on their course. You'll see on the bottom right, on the bottom here, it says Excel. They can actually alter that if they want it to say Atomic Learning. If they want it to say the name of the tutorial, they can change what this says. But it shows up on the left menu in our instance of Sakai. And when the student clicks it, it just seamlessly goes over. It gives them a menu of the videos the instructor wants them to watch. So an instructor can choose, for example, Excel, and maybe they only want them to watch the first series. So they can select that, and that's all the student will see. And then they can go back later. So maybe as they go through the course, they want to expose more and more tutorials. They can go back and add to that tutorial for the students, and they can go in and see more videos. It all plays within um, Sakai. It doesn't go out to a new window or a new URL or anything like that. Um, we can track metrics through the Atomic Learning Interface, and it will integrate with Gradebook. So the only trick to that is a student has to actually finish all the tutorials, and then it'll pop into the Gradebook, and the instructor can go in and add points or turn it off if they don't want students to see that, if it's an extra 
option there. Um, this one I'm really hoping that takes off this fall. We had about six instructors use it in the spring. Um, so I'm hoping that more use it because it's a good way to do uh, prerequisites uh, we have some courses in desktop publishing, graphic design, and they have all of the Adobe suite. So it's nice for instructors to have that there for the students, and that way they can kind of start looking at how to use the software before they have class. Um, we also have integrated, um, it's called Curriculum Builder. It's part of EBSCO Discovery Service, and the library actually uh, requested this. Um, so this allows uh, the instructor to link uh, reading lists and videos and electronic ebooks from the library right into their course. So if they integrate this, we only have one instance per instructor right now because the ebooks allows you to have many, many, many books. Um, so you'll see on the left it says reading lists. And if a student clicks that, they'll go to the automatically, it opens a new tab and they'll go to the EBSCO Curriculum Builder. They can click on See Reading List, and they'll get a list. This is one instructor who uses it a lot. And this is an ebook. so if they click on it, they can print the book. Um, it's a PDF. Some of them are not printable. They have to actually just read them online. Uh, some of them link to videos. So that's a really nice tool for instructors. That way the students aren't searching around the databases looking for the book. They can actually tie it right to the course. Um, and that's another nice LTI tool that we've been using a lot, and that's getting more use as we have it set up. Both of these were set up last fall, um, so we're going on about a year with both of those. And then I just wanted to mention a couple, <clears throat> excuse me, tools we have in progress. Um, Office Mix is part of um, the Office 365 suite, and you can create interactive videos with PowerPoint. It's actually a PowerPoint plugin or add-in, and <clears throat> because of that, then you can also create an LTI. They have an LTI interface, so we're looking at how that will work. Um, currently, it automatically goes on that left menu, so we're trying to see how we want to integrate that because if it goes on the left menu it'll be outside of the students coursework um, so we're looking at that another tool through office 365 is a class notebook and this is new from microsoft so we're looking um, at how that works, how we can train faculty to use it. It could be an option for uh, collaboration like the wiki tool. Um, so we're kind of thinking of maybe using it for that. And then the last one is we use Turning Technologies clickers and the current uh, version is now moving to a cloud version which has an LTI interface so the student can go in they can register their device they can register their license the instructor gets notification and sees a roster of all the students and their devices um, and they don't have to do that and now actually it will integrate a little bit better and it will allow them to put things in their grade book that go with the clicker um, if they do clicker quizzes or tests they can actually integrate that into um, Sakai as well. And then the last one that's not on there, we're really hoping because we are an Office 365 school that uh, Microsoft OneDrive might become an LTI for Sakai. Uh, there is an LTI for Canvas, um, so we're hopeful that there will be an LTI for Sakai coming out from somewhere that we can integrate. And then students and faculty can integrate their OneDrive files and bring them into Sakai. Right now they have to download them from OneDrive and re-upload them into resources or re-upload them into the assignment. Um, so this would be a great advantage if we could do that. So, And that's all that I had. Thank you. Wow, Jennifer. For those are all very, very exciting integrations and potential integrations. Thank you so much. And You're welcome. I'm sure we'll we'll uh, come back to a couple of questions about that in a moment. So next on our agenda is Patrick Miller. Patrick, I've just given you presenter privileges, so you can go ahead and share your desktop. And you'll want to unmute your mic. Can you see anything yet? Not yet. Um,
There we go. Okay. Great. Okay, I'm, I, I don't have a real presentation. I was just going to show a few of the LPIs that might be um, different that we've done. Uh, That's one fine. of them is one of them is a product called um, Maple PA, and I was first going to show a little bit about why we uh, decided to use Maple PA. And um, I can get some of these. Uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, can you see the Maple Soft on your screen? Um, the maple yeah, soft. you might want to make the window a little bit bigger. Um, How do I do that? Just I just stretch the window wider and uh, yeah, just the window that you were in the MapleSoft window. Oh, the MapleSoft the browser, window. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That okay. Browser window. Okay. Either maximize it or. Yeah. Okay. Well, essentially, um, MapleSoft is a tool that was selected by our math department. Uh, in particular, one of the math uh, instructors, uh, calculus instructors, did a very thorough test of all kinds of uh, uh, mathematical type uh, systems. And uh, he determined through his analysis of over a year that MapleSoft was about the best, best of breed for um, mathematical assignments, testing, et cetera. Uh, it has some features, for example, like adaptive testing, where you can organize assignment questions into separate branches. Um, you can have all kinds of conditions. Um, you can customize um, your branching conditions. And it has you know, things like scoring rubrics, uh, and it even another feature that w was very interesting to us was this idea of high stake testing. Um, we've had some departments on the campus, not just mathematics, that want um, you know very complicated uh, exams where where you generate you know for each student a unique version. I know Sakai has uh, Samago has some of this, but this is even uh, for larger numbers of uh, Students and it can even be done, you know, with a, a separate with, with its own uh, proctoring um, uh, environment, uh, and you know, there, it has a lot more uh, in terms of uh, high stakes. Uh, without going to a product like ExamSoft, which you know is a, is a totally different breed of product, uh, so uh, you know, so, so he selected this, and actually for a whole year, we. We did um, our own, uh, we, we actually managed with our own LTI integration. Someone in our, uh, in our department actually produced a, an LTI integration uh, with the product. Then last year, last fall, I'm sorry, yeah, last summer, we worked with MapleSoft to actually produce an LTI 2 integration. And uh, so they now have implemented the, uh, it's LTI2 integration. And it now integrates. So here is an example. Can you see the screen now with Sakai? I have it on his math yes. site with Maple PA um, now integrated by the company. And it's an LTI2 integration, so it even uh, will pass grades. However, we haven't actually implemented the grades yet. Um, but here's an example of a uh, differentiation and integration review, the, the student will then be able to access this through single sign-on within, uh, you know, within uh, Sakai. But you can see it has a very clean look and feel for, the, uh, for this uh, review quiz. So you can do review quizzes, you can do uh, exercises. As you saw, you can do even some adaptive type of exercises. And the inclusion of mathematical formulas is very clean. Uh, it has a great editor. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the features because I don't even know how to use the editor. <laughs> but but you can see that uh, you know it has quite a nice uh, look and feel to it. 
Uh, and, you know, which is certainly more than what we can expect from, uh, you know, the Samago tests and quizzes. So this is an example of a uh, best of breed type of, what we consider to be a best, best of breed type integration. Um, another example, and you can see then, uh, you know, he has a variety of uh, tests, some are basic skills, et cetera, uh, and then some actual, uh, so most of these are reviews, but you see some quizzes there too. Um, the other, uh, one of the other examples I was going to use to, uh, was actually an interesting one. It is the use of, uh, let's see if I can bring it up here. Um, I think I'm going to have to go into another. I thought I had it open. Um, sorry. Uh, That's okay. Oh, here it is. And I just accidentally started up another program, which I'll have to shut down. Uh, this is an example of WordPress uh, using the LTI. Um, the interesting thing about uh, this example is we're actually using a LTI from WordPress to a tool called H5P, which allows you to do some rich, uh, richer types of, uh, you know, quizzes and exercise questions. Um, and and uh, since there's an LTI from H5P to WordPress, we actually are using the LTI to WordPress in order to build some you know richer uh, learning objects in uh, to add to the Sakai site. So here you see an example. Um, if this is just a, an example page, it's not a real page, but uh, you see some examples of you know uh, drag the correct translation to the image. Uh, this is a course. This is for a course on uh, Gaelic uh, and. Uh, so that's just an, an interesting example because there is no LTI currently from H5P to Sakai. But since there's a LTI to WordPress, we're utilizing the WordPress LTI to in, to, in order to integrate the page. Uh, the other thing we're, uh, let me close this here. Um, the other interesting thing here is we are also getting, uh, we're working on getting the XAPI feed from the, uh, from the work that is done in this site uh, into our uh, LRS store. So from an, an analytics point of view, there's some nice features. Uh, I think those are the, the only two. I was, I was going to show Piazza, but I think, I think in the interest of time, we'll skip that one, unless there's a lot of interest. Uh, are others uh, using Piazza on their campuses? We're using it at the University of Virginia. Yeah, OK. So you're familiar with it. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if everybody on the call is. Um, we do have, it looks like we have uh, some time if, if you want to take I'll a quick a look at it. Sure, let me see if I can. Uh, I think I'll have to log out of this one. And let me go back in. Uh, Piazza, for those who aren't familiar with it, is a uh, basically a way to do an anonymous um, forum. And it's very popular with our large science uh, and engineering classes. So I'm going to go in as a particular instructor here. Um, uh, is using it uh, very extens extensively. And uh, so I'll take a look at this. This is a chemistry class in which he has the LTI enabled here for Piazza. 
and um, you can see that um, you know it allows you to do all kinds of uh, uh, announcements to the class, and folks can post things, uh, post questions either uh, anonymously or you know they can uh, identify themselves if they want. But here you see on the left a lot of announcements by the professor themselves, uh, um, but uh, but also from students. Um, Yeah, the uh, you know logistics, you know, explaining some things about the uh, course um, uh, and what to do about exams. Poll everywhere grades. You can see some of those announcements, uh, and it you know it gives you the number of posts. Uh, some statistics here on the uh, activity on the uh, on the site. Um, again, it's uh, very popular, um, uh, especially in the science and engineering areas, where you have large classes and folks aren't always, uh, you know, are are kind of intimidated to ask their questions uh, in the class. So this gives them the opportunity to to do it without being, uh, you know, without their names being obvious. Uh, now you do see that it has some, uh, you know, some uh, uh, notes from from Piazza itself to the professors, uh, you know, uh, advertising a new product. So you do you do get some of that, but uh, but it's uh, you know being a free service. A lot of the faculty are using it, as, as I said, especially in the sciences and the large engineering classes. Uh, one of the things we don't get from Piazza is we don't get. A lot of data. I think I think faculty can get their individual data, but uh, and you do see some things about statistics. But uh, we'd like to be able to get the data uh, to our own central repository, and it's obviously doing here. I, I clicked on statistics so you can see some of the statistics they provide to the professor. Okay, so that's uh, that's about it. Some of the other you know interventions we have is uh, Kaltura, which is our video store. Um, we do have a uh, an LTI to uh, a different. Um, you saw the demo of the Toyota. We have we have a different uh, e portfolio here um, called Digitation, and we did get them to do an LTI to integrate. That's Thank you, it. Pat. Thank Sorry. you so much. You're so welcome. we have, we have. Uh, I'll go ahead and invite you to stop sharing your desktop. Um, but we may want to ask folks to to come back and reshare their desktops um, if if it's to demonstrate response to questions. Um, and we have quite a few, uh, quite a bit of conversation going on in the chat. So let me just back up and. Um, Go through some of these. So one of them, uh, back to Jennifer's presentation, there was a question about are there for curriculum builder, are there licensing per seat options for that? Do you happen to know, Jennifer? I am not sure. I, I'd have to check with our library, but I have not heard of anyone having issues like getting to their uh, Ebooks. I know the one class I showed uh, when I looked at the statistics, he has quite a few people that get to it online um, to read that book. And I have not heard that they've had any issues where one person can view it at a time. But I can make a note. I'll check with our library because they hold a licensing and pay for that tool. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that would be interesting to know. But that was really cool um, integration. And I'm excited to go talk to my library about it. <laughs> um, so uh, turning tech, is that Reef Technologies by another name Dave is asking? Um, I only know it as turning Technologies, so I don't know if that was an older name. And I saw that someone mentioned they have uh, turning Technologies is moving to a version called the Turning Point Cloud. And that does include a mobile device app as well as the hard 
you know, heart handheld clicker. So um, we're working on seeing what instructors want to use that versus the clickers, if they want to use both, and how that's going to work for the fall. Okay. Uh, let's see. I got a backup here. Let's see what else is floating. Um, and Adam um, just posted a question, sort of a question um, about using Office Mix via the Lessons tool with the external tool features. I assume that's true. Adam, do you have any experience with that, Jennifer? We actually are still moving to lessons. So we have people on the Malit modules still. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the folks that we're trying to make sure they don't start posting all of their stuff on the left menu. Um, but when we go to lessons, that's good to know um, that we can go ahead and have the mix LTI and have them do that because that would be really helpful for us. Oh, and Becky um, Roars has chimed in that they add links to office mixes in lessons. So that's links, and I'm not sure if it's exactly this, what we're um, thinking of with the, the external tool integration in lessons. But Becky, um, can you respond to that? Is, is that using the, the external LTI integration in lessons? No, it doesn't have anything to do with LTI at all. You can just add the link um, to the voiceover, um, the Office okay. Mix in Lessons. Great. Okay, got it. But I assume that one would be able to do that. Um, we didn't research that. We tried to keep it real mm -hmm. simple. <laughs> yeah, sure. I, yeah. Okay, let me try to jump back and see where we are in this list. Um, sorry, the uh, chat always jumps down if uh, somebody posts something and I have to re-scroll <laughs> to try to find where my place. Uh, so I might miss some, some comments here. Um, Dave said, I think Reef also has an LTI implementation. And Jennifer, you responded that curriculum builder um sorry that jumped away i don't think there are any receipt issues okay we talked about that all right so um gosh there's quite a bit of conversation going on in the chat i'm going to try to capture it for the recording um so hold off on posting a further chat so i can get to this list if you don't mind i have to keep jumping back um, every time somebody posts another. Sorry, I hate to do that, but I'm just trying to. Uh, so Dave and Becky are having a conversation. Does anyone have access to the materials for Office Mix? I'm not sure what you're talking to, or is this Curriculum Builder? Um, Let they share originals. Okay, so that, uh, all right. So a question for Patrick from Dave, and Patrick, you may have responded to this later. Did the math department look find something to replace Samago? Um, was that their motive um, for going to MapleSoft? Uh, wasn't necessarily just to, uh, to replace um, Samago. It was actually to have a better way of uh, providing, you know, um, math exercises for students. Because um, it, okay. it does have that adaptive learning capability. And, gotcha. Um, yeah. And, yeah, it uh, looks pretty nice. Uh, I got to say, I'm going to be talking to somebody who's doing some STEM support and I tell her about it. I'm not sure she's yeah. aware of it, but um, it's very, it looks very cool. And and it also lets you do algorithmic type problems where you where you write out the you make the overall problem, but then you can vary, you know, uh, from uh, student to student the exact formula. You know, you can change your constants and things like that mm -hmm. without having to retype the entire problem. Gotcha. And Patrick, I 
could not um, quite catch the um, tool that you said you were using with your WordPress integration, um, oh, HYP yeah. maybe. Can you type it's, that into the chat? Yeah. Yes, sure. It's, uh, let me make sure I have the right thing. I believe it's H5P. Okay. It, what it is, it's actually a competitor to Xerti. It's oh. a way of creating, you know, richer uh, learning objects, types of questions, um, videos okay. with, with embedded questions. Um, um, so it's another tool. I mean, we, we also want to try Xerti, but um, Xerti, I, I believe, is still working on their LTI and their XAPI. Right. I believe you're right. Yeah. All right, so yes, can you type that into the chat? Because um, it would be helpful what the name of that is. Yeah, I will. Okay, great, thanks. Um, and see, so let me. Okay, Adam, hold on. Dave makes an excellent point point about uh, the availability of LTI as a function of an LMS um, and the cost savings that we have with Sakai compared to other LMSs that you have to pay a lot of money for. Um, and uh, that the larger academic com community doesn't realize this as a strength of Sakai, so this is definitely a good um, marketing point for for Kai especially. I mean, yes, all of the LMSs employ LTI for integrations, but um, Sakai has a lot of advantages over them. Not to mention all the customization capabilities that you have. So let's see. Let me jump down here and see what does MapleSoft offer over Samago with MathJax support. Pat, did you consider that? Yeah, actually, I, I think I did answer that pretty much. Oh, I'm sorry, later in the chat? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty much because, you know, the adaptive capabilities and it has, you know, the, the, the ability to create a template of a problem and then and then mm -hmm. uh, MapleSoft does the behind the scenes work to, you know, create the individual question problem. Right. You can even gotcha. tell us to, you know, put in a range of, you know, uh, you know, I, I'm not a mathematician, so I don't know all the details, but, you know, a range right. of values to use, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I assume that folks still also, other folks also use Samago at Notre Dame, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Oh, H5P, okay, H5P, okay, got it. I see that now. Thank you. <laughs> I just couldn't quite hear if that was an I or a, I wasn't sure, a Y. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm having problems with my microphone. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Michael and Juliet Duke say they were playing with the I2 grade sending functionality to Sakai 11 a few weeks ago and found the experience less than desirable. Oh, that's too bad. And has anyone else played with this? I don't put the blame to Kai. I think that the process to invoke this is complex. And ooh, that possibly too complex for faculty thoughts. Um, so yeah, if um, has anybody else done any testing of that functionality? I have not. yet but that's good to know Lee. and that you know if uh, chuck severance were on the call he might be able to speak to that but unfortunately he is not so we might want to pose that question to him and uh, see what he has to say Let me back up here, um, see if I missed anything. I had a couple of questions, and we have about 10 minutes, so we need to wrap this part up. Um, 
Jennifer, I had a quick question for you about like learning, and I noted that you said you limit um, the models that faculty can use to three, and I, I just wondered what your rationale for that was. Um, actually, I realize that they can I thought, well, they don't want to keep changing the tutorial. And so I just went with three. That seemed like a manageable number. Um, I've only had one instructor use that many. Um, most of them just use one. So if we need to add more, we will in the future. I see. OK. So just a, a little bit arbitrary, but trying to just make it manageable. Okay, so um, actually, thank thank you guys so much. Um, this was really interesting and a lot of conversation. It's really exciting to see what other people are using, and I've been very excited to go and and talk to folks about some of these LTI tools that you guys are using and um, trying to get those set up in our instance of Kai. Really awesome. Thank you all so much. Really. Appreciate it, and I'm giving you a round of applause. I'm sure everybody else is too. Uh, I did want to remind folks: if you haven't already signed into EarPad, please go ahead and do that before you sign off. Um, I do have a couple of things to wrap up. Uh, I do want to point out that our next meeting is one second here, and I'm going to tell you. on August 3rd, and that will be the Course Development Roundtable with Dave Evelyn, Fawei Gong, and Linda Byth and Roger, at Roger Williams University. So um, that is on August 3rd. We're really looking forward to that. We have um, August 18th and September 1st are still open dates for topics. Um, and the question always comes up at back to school time of year. Um, I'm not sure if September 1st is going to be a date when we want to We might want to put it back or cancel that meeting, um, do it back to school. But I think August 18th is still early enough that we could probably swing that. Uh, if any of you, and I've posted a list of unscheduled topics at the bottom of the etherpad from off of our um, convenience page. Um, if any of you are interested in presenting on any of these topics, I know we had one Atlas Award winner do a presentation, and I would love to hear it. I don't know, Louisa, if you would be willing to check in with a couple of the other award winners and see if they're available August 18th. Would you be up for that? Okay, great. Thanks, and just, just let me know. That would be great. So we'll leave that open for now until we hear from you. Um, and I see some people posting questions. Good idea for open cast Zerdy Sakai free zones every first or third Wednesday. Um, so I'm not sure who that is chatting there, but I'm not sure. Oh, Adam, thanks. Um, so sure, you know, or maybe every other month, because I know most of us just tend to be, you know, mostly focused on Sakai. Um, so I don't want to take too much because I do want a chance to get a noodle presentation that's starting at 11 o'clock. And let me see if I can tell you what room that's going to be in in Big Blue Button. Hold on one second. That is going to be in room one. So if you guys want to switch over to room one uh, for that presentation, it'll be starting in about five minutes. So, thank you. Yeah, Dave, thanks a lot. Um, oh, Jennifer says 
she thinks August 15th is that Wednesday in August. Sorry, Jennifer, I will double check and fix that on schedule. And so, um, Lisa, um, keep that in mind when you're reaching out to the other award winners. So, thank you everyone. Really appreciate the presenters. Again, another round of applause to all of you. Um, good presentations. Really enjoyed it. And we will see you next time.